All right, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this Sunday, November 3rd, 2019, 1246 p.m. I believe that's the correct time since we did fall back um, here on the West Coast. I don't know why they keep changing the clocks, but they do. It's just typical. Uh, anyway, got an earthquake uh, that came into the Northern California region. Uh, 4.1 earthquake just north of the Bay Area, out around the geysers uh, areas, which is kind of south of Lakeport, California, south of Clear Lake. Now this area right here is pretty geologically active. I'm going to show you guys uh, first thing here on the Earthquake 3D globe, that 4.1 in the green flag in Northern California, just north of the Bay Area, like I mentioned. Quite the cluster of quakes down there in Southern California as well, near Ridgecrest. I'll get to that here in just a second. But that 4.1 showing up there north of the Bay, like I mentioned, and this is coming off of a um, an area that we see uh, quite a bit of activity actually Let's see if I can uh, bring that up there a tad bit red square right there indicating that 4.1 quake in Northern California and um, it's a hot spot of activity for geysers um, a lot of uh, geyser areas up there where people I don't know I think they pay some big money to go sit in some hot mud not for sure uh, the whole details about it, but uh, something I'm not really interested in. Anyway, zooming in on that activity right there, that 4.1 shows the uh, uh, exact location there, just south of Lakeport, uh, Clear Lake. Uh, Mount Kanoktai is north of there, kind of right north of that uh, 4.1 by, by a little ways, but uh, yeah, this is definitely far away from Mount Kanoktai, which is a dormant volcano. From a long time ago beautiful area uh not so beautiful politics around that region but uh the area itself in general the scenery is pretty cool as far as nature goes uh, but this 4.1 um, kind of a larger quake for the geysers area i know they've had a uh, quite the amount of earthquakes as well within that region um, and this is just something that goes on and on and on uh, 52 looks like 52 earthquakes just over the last uh, week or so of um, quakes in that region now a lot of times we'll see a couple threes quite a few twos you know hundreds of ones uh, but this one here is up in the four range magnitude and this also followed a uh, 3.7 that occurred yesterday in that same region uh, 3.7 of course a little bit smaller than the 4.1 but uh, Kind of an uptick in, in magnitudes there in this area that we'll keep an eye on over the next uh, couple days or so. Uh, now speaking about the earthquake activity in Southern California, still quite a bit of uh, activity. Let me bring up this other map here and show you guys. Um, been a pretty quiet uh, day so far. Here for me at least just trying to get some like I said some laundry done and uh, some other stuff around the house uh, while I have time to do it okay so let's see what we got going on here I have to rearrange this map a little bit since I've uh, messed with it on the previous map this here's a one day magnitude 2.5 and above just three earthquakes in this region of uh, magnitude 2.5 and above, like I mentioned, 3.4 being the latest near Cyril's Valley, which is kind of near the Ridgecrest area. Um, I do want to, I do want to uh, tweak this a little bit and show you guys um, more, more than just 2.5 as far as the, the earthquakes go. And we'll go ahead and do the last uh man i wish i had a, a different option here for this let's just do one day all magnitudes and that will work out there okay so this is just this is just one day all magnitudes here right 94 earthquakes just today one day magnitudes in the ridgecrest area now a lot of these are small microquakes um under one under two but uh they're definitely seeing some let's see where that three was at i believe they had a a mid three yesterday of course that wouldn't be in the days uh, the one today so 
but just looking at this map here, you can see the general uh, location of the fault system that's being affected there pretty much consistent with what we've seen over the past couple months since that July 4th, July 5th sequence of earthquakes there in Southern California. Uh, the largest largest ones to hit the region in quite some time. Um, I am paying close attention to this area down south east of Ridgecrest that uh, is kind of working its way towards the other fault system down here. We've talked about it a little bit. This is a different type of fault, the garlic fault zone, um, which can uh, produce a significant size quake. It's been relatively active, I mean inactive for quite some time. Uh, I think I posted an article on it a while back about how um, this is somewhat unprece unprecedented uh, seeing movement on this fault system here. Um, and that what that tells me uh, is that we're still seeing continued pressure out here, obviously. We haven't seen any type of decrease in pressure along the west coast uh, in quite some time, I believe. Um, just by the multitude and magnitudes of quakes that we've been seeing pop up all over the place, uh, including an earthquake just north of me uh, this morning up around Shingletown, California, 3.1 striking up there in, in the foothills of the uh, Northern California area. But this this garlic fault zone here, which you guys can see, it's a uh, kind of a what southwest to northeast type trajectory the shear type fault. Of course, this stuff right here can hold quite a bit of pressure uh, before it releases. But if you take a look over here towards the southwest by, oh, about what, 35, 40 miles or so, you got the uh, super dark red line there indicating the uh, plate boundary of the North American plate and the Pacific plate known as the San Andreas Fault Zone, right? That's uh, that's pretty significant area down there. So. We're going to have to keep an eye on this and see uh, if this further uh, if this further earthquake activity uh, will play any effect on on that on that uh, Garlock fault. Like I said, it's it's migrating further down to the south uh, than we've seen it before, and now we're starting to see a little bit of earthquake activity specifically on that fault. Uh, nothing big. Like I said, there's a 2.4 there today. Uh, and this is just one day. I could go back the last seven days and hopefully won't blow up my computer uh, and show all magnitudes in this region. Um, continue anyway. It might be a little pause. Let's take a look here real quick. Get this off of here. Okay, it didn't do too bad. Um, so yeah, um, this is seven days. All magnitudes here now. Uh, still quite a cluster of quakes within that region of the Ridgecrest area and down towards the south along the Garfault system gar fault fault zone uh, not a whole lot of past activity over the week most of it has been relatively fresh just today uh, there was some uh, activity it looks like in sequence up here where these blue dots are now uh, popping up where i'll click on them for you guys near bot bodefish bodfish area and uh, that's kind of up there in the hills and the mountains um, and kind of in a sequence of a line so to speak you guys can see that line that uh, is up here to the north of the Garfault system where, I'm, where those blue dots are now popping up. There's about six of them here in this region and they're all kind of like laid out in a line uh, with uh, what do we got here? The White Wolf Fault Zone. Fault zone. I'll have to take a look at that. It's not directly on that but it's kind of off in the mountainous area of uh, Southern California there where there's no specifically named faults out there. So uh, just a further further uh, belief that you know we're still seeing a lot of pressure in this area here um, you know this is just the last one day of all magnitudes just think since July 4th July 5th how many earthquakes have taken place there how many aftershocks have taken place I should say because that's what they like to call the uh, the smaller quakes from the uh, from the main shakers a lot I'm talking probably well over a hundred thousand earthquakes or more and that's being very very lightly uh, configured there it's just I think it's a lot more than that I do want to get a, uh, um, a total number eventually but uh, you can see today there's still quite a bit of activity popping up in the Southern California region near Ridgecrest and uh, we're seeing that kind of work its way down towards the Garlock fault zone um, which kind of extends right over here to the uh, 
the well-known San Andreas Fault System. The southern part of it, which extends into Palmdale, Lancaster. Uh, you got Victorville. This is the area right here, right around Los Angeles as well, that, uh, uh, you know, people fear. This is the one that scientists are talking about that uh, has built up pressure over the past 100 and, what, 150 years, I believe, with no major quake on the southern part of this San Andreas Fault System in, in that time. Uh, it might be a little bit longer. I can't remember the exact dates, but this is the area that they're talking about that's locked and loaded and will produce a big one. So with another, you know, with a, with a fairly good sized major fault running into that San Andreas fault system, the plate boundary there, uh, with pressure now being applied on it and increasing, it looks like through today, this might be something to watch folks. Be on guard. Um, I will be posting further updates if they become necessary as we watch, uh, you know, Southern California just shake a lot today. Uh, seven days, of course, is this map. So the, a lot, a lot has happened just over the week. What, what are we looking at? 733 earthquakes in the last seven days uh, in this region. Not a whole lot along that southern section of the San Andreas Fault System, folks. Not much movement at all. That's the area that's continuing to build pressure, continuing to uh, wound so tight, you know, from all the movement around it, from various different parts of the plate and, and the plate boundary. Everyone else is moving, but this system, this section right here, continues to, to just build up pressure. Until one day, well, until one day it pops. I mean, that's going to be pretty catastrophic down there. But we will be keeping an eye on it, folks. Uh, as always, I am running live data from that station down there in Southern California near the Ridgecrest area. Uh, looks like, let's see here. We can go back that 4.1 did show up on quite a few stations here looks like they're off the map now um, as far as off the data goes over here to the to the uh, bottom side of your screen but uh, anyway live data stations right now Southern California I got uh, Fiji up here Mendocino California close to me that's a station right here that that 4.1 showed up on rather nicely uh, San Andreas fault system here in Hollister which is kind of like central northern part of the San Andreas fault system. And then this station here, China Lake, which is the one where we're seeing, you know, just massive amounts of aftershocks near Ridgecrest, California. That's this China Lake station here. So, um, you know, the majority of my stations right now are based in California and in Southern California, uh, just just because I it warrants it right now. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting to see the activity that's going on down there. Anyway, folks, I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to jump off here, continue laundry, continue cleaning my house. Um, I did put a little turkey running up here. I don't know if, if I want to keep that thing on there until Thanksgiving or not. Uh, it's kind of just like a little decoration. But uh, I kind of look at it for a second, and all of a sudden I start feeling like hypnotized. And I'm not for sure why. Because it's just a turkey that's walking with an animation. <laughs> But anyway, folks, have a good day. Have a good weekend. Enjoy the rest of your weekend out there. And we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.